Proving gaming isn't dead in 2024, Black Myth Wukong launched a massive success. And despite game science denying the title as a souls light, it's clear Wukong shares some DNA with From Software's catalogue. Like offering a fantastic roster of 107 bosses. That's like 2.6 times more bosses than Best Souls 2. I can't do all those in one video, boys. I've got to break it down. Guys, I can't do this! So join me as we return to Monkey and rank every boss in Black Myth Wukong Chapter 1 from worst to best. The big bad ball guard is a welcoming tutorial boss to pit the player against. His slow telegraphed swings give you plenty of time to dodge, so if you have sloth reactions like me, you're in luck. <laughs> Paired with long recovery windows between attacks, the ball guard is a great warm up for the many bosses ahead of you. I thought I had died to the one shot grab when the cutscene triggered, but I like how unlocking immobilize is integrated midway into the fight, trusting the player to get him to half health, but giving them that little boost in case they need it. I won't embarrass myself and disgrace China by trying to pronounce this frog's name. Social credit deducted. You can find Kermit chilling off the beaten track in the bamboo grove. Careful you don't get croaky on your way to the boss. What's great about this boss is that it feels like you're fighting a giant frog. He whips his tongue around, kicks you with his hind legs, and chest bumps you from across the arena. Despite finding him a relatively simple encounter, I like the creativity in his design and how he encourages you to explore every corner of Man. Guang Mao is the first boss who relies on ranged attacks and sorceries rather than engaging you at melee range. He teleports around the arena, so after he relocates, you'll want to keep the pressure on to prevent him from bombarding you with spells. Watch out for his barfing attack at close range. Come to think of it, the destined one probably smells like a Discord mod's armpit, so maybe that's just his genuine reaction. He can also inflict poison when summoning his spectral snake, so if you're struggling, stock up on some anti-miasma powder to cure the status effect. Your mum's gonna need some anti-miasma my powder when I get my spectral snake out. Next. Ling Shu Zi was all bark and no bite. Despite looking intimidating, he shouldn't give you too much trouble, choosing to go idle during the fight to groom himself. He's like a tutorial boss for the larger bestial enemies in the game, and demonstrates how the devs have generally done a good job at implementing them. The camera manages to keep up with him, and zooming out clarifies what attacks he's doing. Aside from that, can we just appreciate the hair physics on this guy? Fuzzier than Aldi vegetables left in the fridge overnight. Be real, how many of you were humbled by this giant blue baby? Game science definitely put him here to encourage you to run past and return later. Especially since you can't even pick his reward up yet. Mama didn't raise no quitter, and my stubborn ass insisted on beating him at the beginning. The white hits like a truck, with several attacks that can easily one-shot you. His ground pound was particularly nasty. However, he's one of the better bosses in Chapter 1, as he varies his attack chains. I think that's why so many players struggled with him at the start of the game. A bit of patience and anticipation of his harder-hitting moves meant he went down in no time. And if you struggled with the Wandering White, you're in for an absolute treat, because you get the opportunity to reclaim your honor, and you won't want to miss this secret fight, as the reward for defeating Jinchi is the fireproof mantle, an essential item to assist you later. From my understanding, the Wandering White is Elder Jinchi, as the Jinchi we fight is in some kind of pocket dimension in the past, and the White is him in the present day. Any lore heads feel free to elaborate in the comments. Golden Balls differs from his counterpart, as he can use the minions in the arena to heal himself throughout the fight. This gimmick gives the fight a different pacing, and unintentionally makes it easier, as you can heal yourself from defeating the minions, giving you unlimited healing during the battle. Unless you're a masochist like me and insist on fighting the Wandering White, Guangxi will probably be the second boss you encounter on your journey. Now, this is a skill issue, but I did have trouble understanding what attacks he was doing at times due to the fire effects on his staff. Everything blurred into one, and I insisted on trying to deflect his staff throws like they were a projectile attack. I don't know, okay? I don't know what I was doing. Ignoring my own incompetence, Guangxi is a solid early boss. His long Longer combos and speed give you realistic expectations of what to expect from the game later. Upon defeating Guangxi, you're rewarded with the ability to transform into him, which is just a cool mechanic in the game. 
You'd be forgiven if you missed the red long in your playthrough, as you need to find a secret item in Chapter 2 to access the fight. Smash this wall using either the Rat Prince or White Transformation. Enter the cave to pick up the long scale. Go back to the outside forest shrine in Chapter 1. Now you can traverse the waterfall to fight Red Dead Long. He has some basic melee combos, but the big damage comes from his lightning AoEs. However, he staggers easily, providing a window for you to target the pots on his back for massive damage. I'm probably ranking him too highly, but I do love a secret boss. And the spectacle of the fight is nice too. I don't know what gear they're blasting in ancient China, but the Black Wind King is an absolute unit. You don't want him to be grabbing you by the testicles, imagine the grip on it. <clears throat> BWK mixes up attacks between melee and turning into a fart cloud. I didn't notice initially, but there's a very distinct visual cue on when to dodge the gassy charge, so I may have got hit by it a few more times than I would have liked. He also punishes you if you treat the game like a hack and slash, as he has these fake openings, where if you get carried away, he wind clouds behind you to attack. The fight has a nice jewel feeling to it, just a couple of big dudes smashing their sticks together in a dark cave. Oh yeah. White clad noble is when I realized Wukong wasn't messing around. I wonder how many people got skill checked here and put the game down. This Prince Nuada looking ass does not give you a lot of breathing room. He tests your ability to keep up aggression whilst dealing with an equally aggressive enemy. Even when he backs up, he can rapidly close the distance again with a thrusting attack. He becomes extra slippery, pun intended, when he charges up his delayed water slash. It can easily catch you out if you dodge spam. I found his second phase to be easier to deal with as he relies on buffed versions of the same attacks. Although he becomes more agile, the immobilized spell here is your best friend, as he never stays still for too long. Black Bear Gwai was the most challenging boss on my Chapter 1 playthrough. He is a meaty boy. That health bar has enough girth to satisfy your mother. No easy feat. Gwai can end the fight in a few hits. This is one bear attack you don't want to be on the receiving end of. <laughs> Despite that, he is very fair, as his attacks are clear to read. Even though he's a larger boss, I could still understand what he was doing, and he's easily my favourite boss of the chapter. Remember the fireproof mantle we looted after fighting Jinchi? You'll want to use that during Gwai's second phase transition, as it will reduce the fire damage from his AoEs, and prevent you from combusting if you step on the residual flames. I love it when bosses have hidden items that can assist in defeating them. Even if you weren't a fan of Gwai, the spectacle of the boss is undeniable. He's a giant flaming bear dropping wrestling moves atop a blade. Peak. That's one hell of a way to round off the game's opening chapter. Overall, Chapter 1 introduces you to the game with a solid lineup. There aren't any bad bosses here, as even the straightforward ones are well designed, and difficulty is never a primary factor in a fight's quality. However, Chapter 2 steps up not only the boss difficulty, but also the boss quality as well, with more complex bosses that allow the combat system to shine. Who was your favourite boss in Chapter 1? Tell me your ranking below and if you want to see a part 2. Take it easy, and I'll see you on the next one.